Well, hello everybody. John Grimsmo here, bringing you another quarantine vlog at Grimsmo Knives HQ. Super quiet during quarantine. So today, we're gonna fix the problem from the last video, which for me was two days ago. I took yesterday off, it was amazing. And uh, we're gonna dovetail this piece of stock that flew out of the vise. I have learned some lessons, some valuable lessons. One of my favorite comments on that last video was, Oh yeah, I've had that look on your face where I'm like, I forget what the look was, but I was like. And the guy's like, I've had that look. That's, that's the look of information entering your brain at a very fast rate when you learn from your mistakes. Um, I like that. But anyway, so we're gonna dovetail this, we're gonna throw it back, we're gonna do some different strategies and uh, get this guy going. I never did order more materials. That's still the only piece I have. And it's Saturday, so I'm not ordering more today. I, I forget sometimes, but I do realize how fortunate I am to not only own this business and be able to come in and do this during quarantine. I know a lot of you guys are stuck at home and bored out of your minds, but yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful that I get to pursue my craft and I get to learn something amazing during this time and I get to maximize my five axis skills and uh, yeah, just makes me happy. So I'm glad you guys can come along with me too and learn with me. So in order to cut the dovetail, the little grippers into the bottom of the thing, um, I only have two dovetail cutters. This little guy and this big guy. <laughs> so I'm currently going through the sketches in Fusion to try to see which one's gonna fit better. This one's got a big corner radius, so it's not gonna be super awesome, but I think they would both work just differently. All right, so I decided to go with the tiny guy. Uh, the big guy, this, the radius wouldn't have fit, that dovetail cutter. So we're gonna put this guy in tool 121, right there. Boom. Okay, now we gotta to touch off that tool, make sure it's good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut those dovetails again, except I'm gonna not use that face mill that I used in the last video. So I, I do have it mounted in the vise exactly like we had it mounted before where it slipped out. So I gotta be careful, except since I'm not using a face mill, I'm gonna tip it to the side. I'm gonna use an end mill very, very gently, 10th out step over, um, barely gonna tickle the material. And then I'm gonna use that tool we just put in, the chamfer tool, I'm gonna chamfer it super light, super easy. Um, pretty confident that's, that's gonna work. And then we're gonna have the gripping force of the dovetails. Something my buddy Rob told me last night was to, uh, when you're holding stuff like this, plan to put the cutting force into the vise. Like, you want to put the tool pressure towards the vise, not towards the outside, towards the air, towards a way that's going to make it, you know, fly out. It's really good advice. So now I'm prepping the dovetail area, roughing it out. And then it's going to rotate the C 180 degrees. It's going to do the same on the other side. There we go. And then last step, maybe I won't film it, but it'll come up and it'll do the um, chamfer. Okay, well I made another teeny mistake, not a big deal, um, and I almost didn't share it, but I, was, I came to my senses after a few minutes and I was like, you know what, this is a good learning experience. Uh, let me show you what I did. Okay, so I roughed out the material, right? Except, notice how the roughed out area on the right is a lot, and on the left, it's not a lot. Uh, so something's off center. So I'm like, what the heck's going on? 
Is the vice off center? Doubtful. Um, I could definitely probe between these two faces to see if they're centered and maybe I should do that. But I think what's actually happening is the workpiece is tilted sideways a little bit. Um, I can, I don't know if you'll be able to see on camera, but this side is contacting under the, under the coolant. This side has a little tiny gap under the floor. Let's get the air. So I think just ever so slightly as it was gripping, it moved to the side for whatever reason. And then now, I mean, it's a couple degrees off and a, you know, a few thou there is times two and a half arc, whatever you call it. Um, it's quite a bit off over there. And you can definitely tell by the offness here. Now the chamfer tool would have been fine. It's not like it's cutting heavy here and light over there. Um, but then the whole dovetail would have been off center and that would just screw everything up later on. So that's not cool. So I'm gonna redo it, reprogram it to have the dovetail come in deeper so that I, I'm cutting material on both sides. Interesting, so next time I, I would probably not grip it with the grippers. I would sink it deep down into the vise so you get these parallel jaws uh, holding it vertical. And I, I considered that, but um, because of the width of the material, it kind of fits in between the thing here so it wouldn't sit on the pads. Obviously I could use a parallel in there and that's what I would do. I'd put a parallel in, rest it on that, and then pull it out afterwards. So yeah, interesting learning experience. I'm kind of glad I caught it in a fixable state. I got it working. Turn the coolant pack on, but I want to let you guys see it. They say that it's not good for the cutter to turn the coolant on and off like that because the cutter gets hot and then you shove like really cold coolant at it. So I'm mostly doing it just so I can film and or see what's going on. But it's not something you want to do normally. Almost done here. Ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a dovetail. Notice how I used the, uh, the side with the mistake from yesterday or the other day. Can you see? Oh yeah. All right. Now we flip it over, grip it in the jaws, make sure it's centered left to right, and then we can run the other program. All right, things are going really good. I'm actually machining the clamp right now, running through the long program, uh, doing some high-speed uh, surfacing right now. Yeah, things are going good. I can tell that the, um, even though it's dovetailed, it's secure in there right now, but I can tell the material's vibrating a little bit depending on the operation. There's just a lot of length uh, width ratio there. I just found a little goof that's going to look, it's not a bad thing, it's just going to look bad. Doing this 3D surfacing, I must have clicked both ways because it is, uh, see how now it's going to the left and then it's going to come back and go to the right and that is just bad practice. It's going to leave a bad finish going this direction. This is the difference between climb milling, where you're going around the clockwise around the outside of something, or counterclockwise around the inside. So climb milling, you want to go clockwise around the outside, and now I'm doing clockwise on one pass and counterclockwise on the other pass. And that's not, it just leaves a really bad finish when it's conventional milling. So that one's going to be a good finish. That one's going to be a gross finish. So it's like every step is going to be good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. Uh, just from a visual aesthetic perspective. Curious to see what it looks like once it's out. Also, I don't know if you guys have noticed, whenever the coolant turns off, it actually blasts air through all the lines to purge them. Um, and it looks really cool. Here, I'll do it right now. Turn the coolant off. And then they're clean, then they don't drip, and then there must be little check valves too. It's just a cool little feature. Never seen that on a machine before.
So this now is the part where it it's tabbing it off. The last little operation. It's the last step of this part. Um, let's film a time lapse of me reacting to it. If it falls, I don't know. You'll see my reaction. Um, I can't really get camera in there while watching at the same time. So. It broke off. Tabs should have been thicker. Ah. Man, it's hard to win here. Jeez. Okay. Not a bad. The, the tool's toast, I can see it. It's just annoying. All right, so the good and the bad. The good part is it's not a big deal. Um, bad part is it's just super annoying. I made, I don't know, I should have done better. But. That's gross, that's gross, that's gross. This is all just from falling off. So it left this little sliver right there. And as it was coming across with the last little pass, it just let go and it broke. Um, I know this, but I should have probably put the sliver centered, either you know, like Mohawk down the center, or um, what some people do is they'll put two tabs here and one tab here so you're kind of tripoding it um, and I should really learn how to do that it's not hard you just you just got to do it um, that would add a lot of stability and I think I just have to get it out of my head that I can make this face look nice at all it's just gonna look gross I mean I should I should finish these radiuses while there's full meat here and then just worry about that flat face like don't care if it's a gross finish, we can sand it, or if I need to, I can fixture it and then deck it off again on a second off, but I need to get it through my head that that face is okay to look gross and have like six tabs or whatever it needs, but that rigidity is the key point here that we have to do. Um, anyway, let me give a closer look and kind of review this part. All right, so a couple things. Um, None of the finishes you see are from the face mill. They're actually from a 3 8 of bull nose. But because the material was hanging out, it was just vibrating a little bit. So the little bit of chatter that you see there, um, this finish is half decent. This finish is kind of gross, the flat there. Like it's good here where it's really close to the clamping, but it gets worse and worse the further out it gets. And that's just kind of the harmonics, the vibration of the material. Um, this radius turned out pretty good. I could have done a tighter step over, but that wasn't really the goal. A little bit of vibration band right there. Uh, the sides are okay, but there's a bit of a blend issue right there and there. And then, Uh, it's just gross. It just feels gross. Um, I did the engraving at 40,000 RPM with that 10 thou tapered end mill. Looks awesome. It was so fast. Feels pretty good. It's not very deep either. Chamfers around the outside look good. So here's a blend from a tool chamfer to a 3D chamfer. It's kind of cool. So I have a lot to learn. But the funny thing is, this is actually, I'll use this. You know, I just gotta grind and scotch bright off the gross parts, but uh, we're basically looking like, how am I gonna do it, like that. And then the things are still held. Two screws there. 
So all this guy's doing is just adding a little boink, keep it flat. Just feels gross. So, yeah, that tool's not happy right now. The material, who cares about the material? The dovetail's awesome. That worked out great, like no worries there. Um, I mean, crap like that's not good for the tool, not good for the tool holder or the spindle or anything. I'm, I'm sure it's all fine, but you just, I gotta avoid this crap. I can do better. So, I mean, I, I don't feel good about it, but I'm not beating myself up too much about it. Um, I just know that I can do better, which is good. I learned a lot in this experience. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys did too. Um, what else did I want to say? I don't know. Next thing we got to do is we got to face down the four sides of that pallet, the tombstone right in there. Maybe we'll do that right now. But before I forget, because I shouldn't forget this, I gotta replace that tool, touch it off, put a new one in, make everything happy again. Uh, yeah. So with stuff like this, I'm starting to realize it's all about experience, confidence, and I don't know, maybe some other stuff, but um, confidence like in Camplete, in Fusion, in your abilities, in the machine doing what you tell it to do, in uh, the way you're, there's, there's variables, there's a hundred variables in, in this kind of stuff. So like the way you're clamping it, the way your tools are held, the way the tool blah, 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 blah. Um, but yeah, the dovetail worked out really good and that adds just a significant level of confidence um, to, the, to the holding of the part, which is good. You need that confidence so you don't have to worry about it. So you can worry about other stuff and I was going to say, I wanted to say that uh, I know some people that actually buy like nice CNC machines, like $100,000 CNC machines um, just to cut dovetails in raw material because some people get an order for 10,000 parts and they're like, okay, I got I to gotta dovetail 10,000 pieces of material like this. So they'll buy a nice machine and then three axis machine with a robot loader and everything and just stack up parts over here, robot loads it in cuts a dovetail, puts it over here 10,000 times, and then ready for the next job. That I, I see the need for that now. Not for us necessarily, because we don't do, we're not gonna do a ton of dovetail work like that, not anytime soon. Um, but it's, it's a really neat concept, and it makes complete sense. Another cool thing, as I was uh, kind of admiring the remnant piece, was looking at the flap that came off. Um, this, this flap was, was the last thing being held before it broke loose, and it's, uh, ah, see how thick it is here. Give or take, we've got about, I see 18 thou, 12 thou, 13 thou, depending on where I'm measuring it. Um, and you can see... It's not a lot of meat left, and it just started to shear, and it just ripped like a piece of paper. I mean, 12 thou is just three or four pieces of paper. That's too thin. I think I was going for 20? I don't know. I forget. But I should have left them a lot thicker. Um, and now I know. Now I know. Well guys, that's it for me today. I'm gonna to take this part home and show my kids and see if they can spot all the problems. <laughs> it's always fun. Hope you guys are well. Take care, bye.